I'm not ashamed. What would the spirit of truth convict the world of when he came? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of John on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with him, turn to John chapter 16. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 15. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So John chapter 16, beginning of verse 1. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Jesus is still with the disciples before they depart for the Garden of Gethsemane. It is the final moments before they do so, but Jesus has been telling them not only the things that will happen to him, but the things that will happen to them after he has been raised from the dead and ascended to the Father. He has specifically been telling the disciples about the Holy Spirit, who would come to them and bring to remembrance all things Jesus said to them. Now, why did Jesus tell the disciples all these things? According to verse, verse 1 of chapter 16, it was so that they would not be made to stumble. That night Jesus would be arrested and the next day killed. The apostles out of fear would run and stumble that night. However, Jesus would be raised again and their faith restored. But Jesus was going to go to heaven shortly after his resurrection. The disciples would face persecution and many would come seeking their lives thinking they were doing God's service when in fact they weren't because they didn't know the Father due to their rejection of Jesus. By telling the disciples what they were going to face in the name of Jesus, then when the time came and they did face it, they would be able to remember what Jesus said and their faith not be shaken again. He didn't tell them these things before because he was going to be with them, and so they wouldn't need to be privy to this knowledge yet. But now that he was going, they needed this knowledge. Now, by that time in the night, the disciples had stopped asking where Jesus was going, not because they didn't care anymore or because they had perfect understanding, but because sorrow had filled their hearts over what Jesus was saying. However, in reality, the disciples should actually have been longing for Jesus to be ascended back into heaven. For if he didn't go, then the Helper, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, wouldn't come. Now, to the disciples at that time, they would have not understood how the Holy Spirit's coming was actually an advantage, for they thought that Jesus was all that they needed. But Jesus had a mission, dying for the sins of mankind. It was going to be the Holy Spirit who would be the one who would convict the world. And what would he convict the world of? Well, he would convict the world of sin because they did not believe in Jesus. When it comes to our salvation, the only way to be saved is through Jesus, because Jesus is the only one who paid the price for sin. Without Jesus, we're still in our sins and have no hope of eternal life with God. The Holy Spirit would be re revealing to this world through the apostles this truth. But the Holy Spirit would also convict the world of righteousness. When Jesus was raised from the dead and ascended to heaven, it confirmed all that Jesus said was true. He was the Son of God. He was a holy, righteous man. 
In rejecting Jesus, the world was in fact the unrighteous. If we want to be righteous, we have to follow the example of Jesus and be saved through him. So in convicting the world of righteousness, the Holy Spirit was showing the world what it means to be righteous. And finally, the Holy Spirit would convict the world of judgment. Back since the Garden of Eden, mankind has been enslaved in sin by the devil. Death was a consequence of that, and there was nothing we could do to free ourselves from that enslavement. However, in dying and being raised again, Jesus broke the hold that Satan had on us. He judged the prince of this world and found him unequivocally guilty. Because Christ judged Satan, he has the power to judge all people and will judge all people. So in testifying of these things and convicting the world of these things, the Holy Spirit is revealing to mankind the way out, the only way out, which will be through Jesus. Now Jesus says he has much more to reveal to the disciples, but they could not bear it then, meaning that they were not ready for it then. But they would be someday, and that day would be when the Holy Spirit came, for he would guide them to all truth. And they could trust what the Holy Spirit said, because the Holy Spirit would not speak of his own authority, but will only speak what he hears. Jesus says that he will take what is Christ and reveal it to them, just as Christ had taken what is the Father's and revealed it unto them. This shows us the perfect unity of the Godhead. They work in total concert with one another, rather than in competition to one another. We can trust what one of them says because it's what all of them says. What a blessing it is to worship such a God. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of John chapter 16, verses 16 to 24, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.